If we take an 0.5 millimeter wire thick pancake coil with quite about 2,000 turns, we put it over a 60 millimeter north magnet where it should repel, and we put a lot more voltage and current through it using an isolation transformer, an AC variable controller, and then a 35 amp rectifier. Now it'll jump off the ground. But it takes a lot of current. This is about 120 volts and 4 amps, and the thing's very heavy. It almost weighs almost a kilogram. So if we take this 0.5 millimeter wire pancake coil, which weighs about a kilogram, and place them over 10 mag magnets where the field have been reversed to S up rather than N up, but they're all placed in a ring, and we put 120 volts and 4 amps, we're going to jump up quite nicely. We're coming off mains power through an AC controller and then a 35 amp rectifier. Let's try rings of different size. Somewhat larger ring of 12 50 millimeter S magnets where the pancake coil, about a kilogram, doesn't overlap them. Nothing happens. We get no reverse field levitation. Putting the 0.5 millimeter kilogram heavy pancake coil over eight magnets all S up. For reverse field levitation, we put 120 volts and 4 amps through it, and it jumps up again like the 10 case. You remember the 12 magnets don't work. And now the pancake coil is overlapping the reverse field of the ring. And if we put this 0.5 millimeter pancake coil, it's getting hot, over a ring of 6 S magnets, turn on 120 volts and 4 amps, nothing happens because the ring has gotten too small. It's for fun, this is an 0.5 millimeter pancake coil, thousand turns of wire, we've got 120 volts. Let's have four 60 millimeter north magnets ready to repel under it to strengthen the field there. And watch what happens when we turn on the power. Now it really jumps up. So there's really a lot of power here if you want to use it. To conclude, here's a ring of 8S magnets with two 60 millimeter N magnets just below and watch it fly. Whoop it daisy. That weighs about a kilogram. We're putting 120 volts through the outside ring. Very, very exciting. Now we're going to study the levitation of a pancake coil made of 1.25 mil wire from a simple 60 north magnet. We turn on the power supply and it jumps up. So it repels off the north side of the field this fairly heavy pancake coil. Under this pancake coil, we're going to put a ring of 10 S magnets, the reverse field, and the pancake coil fits around the edge where they close in just inside the edge of the ring. We turn it on, and now it jumps up again, though the field's reversed. So this is called a reverse field levitation. We'll study a few different rings of magnets to see which is the best. I have a ring of 12 50 millimeter magnets all south up, 10 jumped up, but now the field's a little further out. And when we turn on the power, it barely moves. So it's got to be right at the edge of the field. It can't be inside or it won't lift. Now the ring's a bit too big to lift up. So we can look at a ring of eight 50 millimeter magnets south up, where the edges of the pancake coil extend slightly over the magnets beyond the inner edge. And again, it lifts up nice, nicely as 10. 12 wouldn't lift up at all, but eight lifts up okay. Now when we reduce the ring size from 8 to 6 and still keep the S poles like we've done here, the ring gets too small to make it jump up. It just wobbles a little bit. So the optimal ring sizes are 8 and 10 and 6 too, too small and 12 is too large. Put this same pancake coil over a 60 millimeter south magnet. There's repelling for the rings, but now if you look closely, it actually attracts. You see the thing pulled down. And it does exactly the opposite of what the 10 or 8 rings did. Again, if we flip the 60 millimeter magnet back to north, the opposite field, now it jumps up. So the field's been reversed, whether we have a direct magnet in the center or a ring of 8 or 10 magnets around the outside. North repels up here for a single magnet in the center, whereas for 8 or 10 magnets we're in a ring around the outside, south repels up. This is called reverse field levitation. Remind you, I'm going to put the ring of 10 magnets all south up, 50 millimeter. Where it's just the, the pancake curl just sits at the very edge of the inner edge of the ring. And it jumps way up. That's the winner. Now you, you remember that the 
60 millimeter magnet with S up at the center pulled downward. So one way it goes up, the other way it goes down, where we can either levitate up or down on the same field, depending on how we design the geometry. Forward or reverse field levitation. This pancake coil has about a thousand turns of 1.2 millimeter wire, 15 volts being applied in about 20 amps.